Okay, it's getting close to 9 in the morning now on the 21st of May, and I just started to work on this part of the dreams from last night. And um, some stuff happened and started to understand when I was listening back what this dream might mean. So I thought, better stop and explain because I didn't understand it when the first time I read it. Okay. So the first thing that happened, like I was, I had worked on the first part of the, um, what I had done. I've already uploaded this, the dream about the stage. And then I was, you know, I wanted to eat some food. I wanted to drink some coffee and stuff. So and <clears throat> do a couple other things. And um, I decided to heat the, um, there's enough for another cup of coffee left in the pot. It was cold, so I decided to heat it up on the stove. Um, so what I do is I heat milk first, and then I pour the coffee into the milk, and I heat the coffee and the milk together so that I don't burn the coffee, and then I, that's how I reheat coffee for myself. So I had poured some coffee into the cup, to save it to pour into the milk and normally what I would do in this case is pour milk into the pan and heat it on the pan now sometimes if I'm doing things like going back to the computer and working on stuff I will forget and overheat things and burn them but the thing is this gets done to me with my this is a mind control thing so it seems like burning stuff on the stove is a typical 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 mind control trick and there's times when this is done to me so much I'll just burn stuff uh, day after day after day. When Chris was in the hospital with heart failure that was done to him on purpose by people with directed energy weapons attacking his heart implants and his breathing and stuff, um, I was burning, I was at home by myself, I was burning stuff like constantly. Every day I was burning stuff on the stove. Was, you know, it was one of the different mind control things that was being done on me. It was, I was being shown a lot of stuff when Chris was in the hospital. There's been periods of time where I get shown stuff a lot. Um, and I was shown how easy it was to make somebody burn things. And, I mean, you could, you could also be made to leave something on the stove, fall asleep when you don't think that you're going to fall asleep, and, you know, either you're going to wake up or you're not going to wake up. And so it seems to be really easy to set fires in all different ways with these things. You don't have directly have to set the fire. You just have to control somebody so that they set the fire themselves. Um or that they sleep and they don't hear a fire starting. Very easy to set fires <clears throat> from what I've seen. So um, anyway, so this morning, what I thought I had done, okay, and what I normally would do in this situation is start to heat the milk. Um, anyway, so I sat down, and this is what I thought I had done. So I sat down and started to listen to myself read this dream and I, I read it like this, idea of hear a sound, it's a frog, right? When I heard myself read that back, I realized that hear a sound sounds like hearasoles, the name of the uh, Mexican food cart that tainted my food, or, you know, um, this is entirely, uh, I think I might have actually felt this implant. If I'm correct, this implant is at the, kind of at the top of my stomach. So I have one, I have an implant on the left side of my, digestive system that was planted by Mike Payne. I have a, an implant on the right side of my digestive system and I'm not sure how that one got there. And I apparently there was an implant planted by Herosols last year and if I'm correct and in, in, I might have felt it once and it's kind of towards the it's more towards the top center of my digestive system. So it sounded like hear a souls when I heard hear a sound. And that would make sense because one of these things, the implants are used for all the time. And you hear it a lot in my older videos. I hate it. It's this sound that comes out of my mouth when I'm talking. And it's like this, you know, it sounds like your digestive system is just making some sort of embarrassing sounds. But it's being done with the implant. The implant is being activated to create these sounds. And the implant can be activated to create all kinds of weird sounds. <clears throat> real creepy weird gurgly sounds or just smaller sounds that might be frog-like um, you know can make you have flatulence they can make they can control your um, um, you know bowel movements 
they can make you extremely ill. So, um, so Hera Sounds, I believe, actually was deliberately connected to Hera Souls, and that is also sort of supported with this idea of the frog next to my bed. <clears throat> maybe came from a tadpole I'd been keeping, so maybe there's something about, um, it could be the shape of the tadpole, or it could have to do with the word tad, and it could be the name tad. In other words, um, the, old, the tad that I would think it might be would be Tad Doyle, the musician from Seattle, because I know he's involved in this. Um, but the idea of maybe it's from behind my side of the bed, or that's where it sounds like this frog. Um, so I thought, well, is there something down by my side of the bed? And when I look down there, um, the one thing that's down there that might be linked into this is a box with some medication in it. So this is, this is, um, pain medication that I keep for, um, when I have severe back pain, which is also an implant-based attack. Um, but it might be linking, you know, since the implants are medical, um, I mean, the implants are linked with medicine, so it makes sense that the area where I heard that frog was, um, you know, there's a little box with medication in it related to other implant issues. The other possibility is that it has to do with these panels on the side of my bed in this, you know, the area, I still don't know what's on the other side of that wall. Um, and I can't find out because the apartment managers and stuff are real cagey with me and I have the sense that if I push too hard they're going to retaliate in some way. Um, maybe even put my housing at risk. So, um, but um, the, you know, the main guy that sort of seems like the supervisor of all the grounds people is white and he's driving a brand new SUV that he got last fall and then the other guys that work in here are Mexican um, so it is you know um, these I, what I understand is that these folks buy their way in everywhere they buy their way they've clearly bought their way into the uh, management of this apartment complex um, they buy their way into schools. They buy their way partly through through maintenance people, janitors, plumbers, um, people who install systems. Um, so, you know, this is a network that will be protected. Um, no one's going to get arrested for putting devices, wireless devices, in, as far as I can tell. I mean, there might be, there might, now there might be this sort of gangster-style retaliation thing that goes on. That's kind of, seems like it's the only thing that happens. But, you know, it's not like um, somebody puts sprinklers, uh, cameras in, uh, you know, or microphones in a, a irrigation system in a school. It's not like the police or the FBI are going to um, actually do a you know legal process on this because it's too protected. Uh, that's one of the things I think should change. But at this point, this whole underground network works through the police forces, including the FBI. So anyway, um, it's possible that there's something going on. This is linked somehow to the panels next to my bed because sometimes I see blue dots on those panels and it makes me think that maybe there's, um, you know, it's not clear what's going on, but it's possible that there's devices that get put on the other side of those panels or on the other side of my walls that interact with wireless devices in my apartment or even in my body. So that's another possible meaning of this. Um, but what's coming out in the last few days is the, the link with Andrew Lopez and all of this. And I had a dream. I didn't read it online. Um, this was back, I think, in 2018, where it was shown to me that Andrew Lopez 
does work with Mexican food carts to implant people. Now, the, the food cart that I saw in that particular dream was a, I, it was a specific food cart, and it was in a totally different part of town. Is it a food cart that I'd been to? I think I actually was there once. Now, that's interesting. Once I went to this food cart uh, in northeast Portland. So I'm not sure if the, something happened to me there and then that was an unusual behavior. But, you know, these mind control incidents happen with unusual behaviors. So, you know, you're in a specific part of town as I was, you know, for I was doing, you know, I was um, it was for a work that I was doing. All of a sudden, both Chris and I want Mexican food, you know, and there's a limited um, access to Mexican food. You know, it, it's easy to see how that could happen if the person had access to mind control technology. Um, so even if it's very, even if it's not your normal behavior, and sometimes maybe even especially if it's your not, not your normal behavior, um, you might be stepping, walking right into a trap that's been set. Then this hot spots around the apartment, that kind of confirms this idea um, of things maybe being aimed from outside the walls. In, from, from, again, there's at least two walls, large, you know, walls in my apartment. I have no idea what's on the other side of them. I can't even get into the space. Nobody lives there. There are um, basement spaces. Equipment feels hot, and then it all seems to short out. Um, you know, I just switched to a new computer, and so I wanted to um, archive all the stuff on my old computer, and all of a sudden my old computer wouldn't start. I don't know if my old computer has been permanently fried, or if that was a temporary situation, but that's interesting also. Um, and I've had other electrical equipment fried with directed energy shots, including this phone that I'm using right now. Half it was, the screen is half fried. <clears throat> uh, um, okay, and then right after that, I got a, no, a new phone that then got fried, which I replaced with a phone that ended up not working. That was also a setup situation. So look for a flashlight to try to. Okay, yes, this is support for the idea that the flashlight to try to connect the circuit breakers because that panel next to my bed you know I'm told <coughs> behind the panel are some type of circuit breaker type things I don't know what's in those panels um, <clears throat> so this confirms my suspicion that something may be um, going on with the panels next to my bed and, and or the space behind the wall there. Maybe this is linked to beating stuff heated, smoked, shorted out, idea of hot like an iron. I just recently bought an iron so I'm gonna go and figure out what, what there might be something to um, so it might be something to the like the name iron you know um, I, I will say, and I'm not accusing him, but my daughter's boyfriend, his last name is Herrera, which I think is Spanish for iron. Um, so clearly there's links here, okay, to Mexican, Spanish, uh, language, you know, the, the Mexican food cart here is souls, the, um, guys that do the grounds here who are, um, Latino, native speakers of Spanish, um, and possibly also to my daughter's boyfriend, whose last name is Herrera. And he's native, so um, beating, something about beating. Now yesterday I had this dream about beads, and the beads were called Japanese steeg rollers. <laughs> Um, 
so the beads that I use are actually Japanese beads, but um, beadwork a lot of time is associated. But so okay, so yes, because the because the bead the the implants I know that the implant on the left side of my gut is linked to I don't know if it's China, Korea, or Japan, or all three of those things. It might be all three. But these other implants are linked to Mexican food carts, or at least one of the other implants is linked to a Mexican food cart. So just because the implant itself is, you know, made by a Japanese or a Korean company doesn't mean that, you know, it hasn't gone through um, a Latin American country or isn't being controlled by people linked to Latin American country. A lot of this seems to be linked to um, cocaine trafficking as well. And even the medicine, even the medicine seems to be linked to cocaine trafficking. And I think, I don't know for certain, but I think that the reason for that is because cocaine was once a pharmaceutical medicine. And this thing is so old, this thing has been planned out for so long it's possible that these guys got in the door in the 1920s and um, then, you know, cocaine became outlawed, but in within the realm of this game where normal laws don't seem to apply, um, cocaine is still being treated like a legitimate, you know, and the, and the cocaine cartels are still being treated like legitimate players and um, not being excluded simply because of the nature of their drug. I don't know if that's really what's going on, but it's really, there's a decent possibility that's what's going on. Or it might not be about the the substance, it might just have to do with the families associated with these substances. But um, my understanding is that my big problem is the cocaine traffickers, and that they are the ones, you know, they, they are gung-ho to kill me and my daughter. And they're working through people in this country to achieve that. So, um, <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why this apartment is so dangerous. And the situation is so dangerous. One of many reasons. 